I'm Dr. Thomas Malloy, Medical Director for Cardiac Surgery, Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular, Adventist Medical Center in Portland, Oregon. I specialize in adult cardiac surgery, including minimally invasive and robotic cardiac surgery. Coronary artery disease remains the leading cause of death in the United States. Most patients are best treated with primary prevention. Unfortunately, for some, intervention is necessary to prolong or improve the quality of life. At Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular, patients with coronary disease are evaluated by a multidisciplinary team to determine whether medical, catheter-based, or coronary bypass surgery is most appropriate. The coronary arteries are the first arterial branches off of the aorta. They include the right main coronary artery and the left main coronary artery, which branches into circumflex and left anterior descending vessels. Atherosclerosis is the process of developing occlusive plaque in the coronary arteries. Risk factors for development of plaque include male sex, a family history of coronary disease, smoking, high blood pressure, and elevated serum cholesterol. Primary prevention of coronary disease is directed at the last of these three risk factors. Most patients with severe coronary disease at Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular can be treated by our interventional cardiologists with angioplasty. A balloon catheter expands in the obstructed vessel. Long-term patency is enhanced with the implantation of a drug-eluting stent. In this angiogram, we see an occluded right coronary artery that is opened with angioplasty and saves a patient from having an extensive myocardial infarction. Patients with complex triple vessel disease or left main coronary disease are generally treated with surgical revascularization. The internal mammary artery, which runs under the breastbone, is generally utilized to revascularize the left anterior descending artery. The internal mammary artery has the highest patency of any revascularization conduit. The internal mammary artery has high patency when utilized to bypass a blocked artery, with 95% remaining patent at 15 years. Vein grafts are utilized generally for the less important coronary arteries and are harvested with endoscopic technique. The proximal anastomosis on the aorta delivers blood around the blockage to the artery beyond the blockage. Multi-vessel bypass surgery is generally performed via median sternotomy, utilizing the heart-lung machine to provide a bloodless, motionless field. Patients with isolated disease to the left anterior descending can be treated. Full sternotomy, however, may not be necessary for patients who have isolated disease of the left anterior descending coronary artery or patients who have left anterior descending disease and disease in other smaller branches that can be treated with catheter-based intervention. These patients are operated on with the heart beating utilizing special stabilization equipment. Robotic assistance is utilized to mobilize the internal mammary artery in minimally invasive bypass surgery. You can see that this allows enhanced visualization of the vessel which is only one to two millimeters in size, looks much larger uh, under 10x magnification and allows for very uh, precise skeletonization of the internal mammary uh, vessel. The technique of anastomosing coronary vessels is the same whether it's done robotically or via open techniques. This is an end-to-side anastomosis. Also end-to-end -end anastomoses are commonly used. Titanium plates are utilized to stabilize the sternum in patients who require a sternotomy much more uh, solid closure than traditional wire closure. This greatly reduces pain and discomfort during the recovery period and decreases the incidence of infection and sternal non-union. Outcomes for most patients undergoing bypass surgery in the United States are tracked utilizing the Society of Thoracic Surgeons database. My personal outcomes reveal shorter duration of life support and shorter duration of intensive care, a shorter hospital stay, 
and decreased frequency of complications compared with other centers. In this slide we see that many of my patients are extubated or have the breathing tube removed in the operating room versus very few in other centers. Likewise, patients who arrive in the intensive care unit on ventilator support remain so for only five to six hours in my patients versus the better part of a day in most programs. Blood usage is rare in my patients, 12 to 20 percent versus over 40 percent in most centers. Intensive care unit time again is significantly less, roughly half that of the STS average, and postoperative length of stay again roughly half that of the STS average. And in, in hospital mortality, comparable or better than STS average. Our multidisciplinary team at Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular is available 24-7 to provide state-of-the-art care for patients with coronary artery disease.